Starting us off at number 10 is the Pygmy Rabbit. Believe it or not, this is the smallest rabbit in the world. Their average body length is 9.4 to 11.4 inches, which is 24 to 29 centimeters, and adults only weigh up to 14 ounces, or 400 grams. The Pygmy Rabbit is a slate gray with a pinkish tinge in the winter and then turns more brown again in the summertime. In other words, even these little bunny rabbits can get better tans than I can. I'm not jealous, but you know, anyway, these cute and tiny rabbits can be found all over North America. Usually in areas with deep soil where they burrow into tall, dense sagebrush for cover and for food. In and amongst these dense sagebrush, these rabbits can travel through self-made escape routes from other predators. And if they didn't already seem like hard workers, they are also the only rabbits in the United States who dig their own burrows as well. Sadly, this cute little animal back in 2003 was listed as a threatened species due to the loss of habitat. It has since been listed as an endangered species. So if you happen to live in an area with sagebrush, leave it alone and help these little guys out. Just so you know, that's a common theme with today's video. A lot of them are very endangered. Number nine, the pink fairy armadillo. I want one, I want one so bad. I think I found a pet that was made for me. This little sweet angel baby is one of the cutest things on the planet. It looks like a sleepy guinea pig with an armored shell on top. So like an armored guinea pig. <laughs> they are the smallest kind of armadillo on the planet and also have a dorsal shell that's almost entirely separate separate from their body. The pink fairy has also been nicknamed sand swimmers as they can burrow and move through the ground with their incredible paws like they're swimming through the ocean, like it's that easy for them. During the day they can dig and dig and dig and only come out at night to feed. Though you can usually find them near ant hills because that's easy fast food for them. On a particularly rainy day you may also see them emerge in order to prevent drowning and getting wet. If they get wet they can't thermoregulate properly which can make them ill. But sadly the pink fairy armadillo is on the endangered species list due to threats of their habitat and domestic dogs. At number eight, we have the Arboreal Minute Salamander. If you look carefully at the forest floors of Oaxaca, Mexico, you just might catch a glimpse of one of these tiny lizard-like creatures. It will be fairly easy to spot thanks to its big bug-like eyes. The bodies of these salamanders average 17 millimeters in length, one millimeter shorter than the Jaragua dwarf gecko, who didn't make our list today, but gets an honorable shout out. The arboreal minute salamander beat out the dwarf gecko and is believed to be the world's smallest reptile. This is crazy because I thought salamanders were tiny enough already, but I guess not. And I'll never forget seeing my very first salamander underneath a log back in my grade six teacher's maple bush. Number seven, Madame Bertha's mouse lemur. Up next, we have the smallest primate in the world. Reaching lengths of only 4.6 inches in adult males and five inches in females, these little fur babies are unfortunately on the critically endangered species list. The Madame Bertha's mouse lemur is native to Madagascar and is under threat due to habitat loss. It's easy to see why they are considered mouse lemurs due to their size and the fact that their tails are longer than their bodies. So they look like little mice. They are nocturnal and sleep for most of the day in tree nests and hollows, which is why the species are under such threat. Due to slash and burn agriculture, many of their homes are cut down and burned away while they are still inside them, which is even sadder. Researchers estimate that if this process isn't halted immediately, then within 10 years, the species may no longer exist at all. So let's look for other avenues, shall we? At number six, we have my most favorite animal on this list, the speckled padloper tortoise. Why is it my favorite? Because one of my biggest fandoms other than Ghostbusters is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, if you didn't already know. So obviously turtles are one of my favorite animals of all time. The speckled padloper tortoise is definitely part of that. They are also the smallest turtle in the world with males measuring 2.4 to 3.1 inches or six to eight centimeters in length and the females measuring up to four inches, which is 10 centimeters in length. Sadly, these tiny turtles don't feed on tiny slices of pizza, to my disappointment. They feed on small plants. They live in the rocky outcrops of South Africa where they can hide from their predators and live up to 90 to 100 years. Probably a bit safer than the sewers of New York City, so I can't really blame them. Number five. The bee hummingbird. This little bird is perfect for our channel and I think you can guess why because it's a, it's a bumblebee hummingbird. It's called the bee hummingbird for a reason as it's the world's smallest bird. They are so small they are often mistaken for bees. It measures a mere two and a quarter inches long and lives in the balmy climate of Cuba. They weigh less than two grams which is about the same feeling you'd get if you put a dime in the palm of your hand. It would weigh about the same. Small birds of course lay even smaller eggs and each one is about the size of a tiny coffee bean. But like their larger counterparts they fly incredibly 
incredibly fast with wings that can beat anywhere from 80 to 200 times a second, depending on if it's mating season. If it's mating season, they beat around 200 times a second. A second! That's over a thousand beats per minute. They also have two kinds of males, breeding and non-breeding. The breeding males are bright and colorful, while females and non-breeding males feature more grayscale colors. But the males can get quite aggressive and have been known to chase our channel mascot out of its territory when it comes to seeking out nectar. So, looks like we got some competition. <laughs> At number four, staying with the bumblebee theme, we have the bumblebee bat, or more commonly known as the kittis hognose bat. This tiny bat is not only the world's smallest bat, but also the world's smallest living mammal. These bats get their name due to their pig-like snouts and reddish brown coats of fur. They measure in at 1.1 to 1.6 inches and weigh only 0.05 to 0.07 ounces. That's only 1.5 to 2 grams. In case you're wondering why it's also called the bumblebee bat, it's because it is the exact same size as our mascot, a bumblebee. How fitting for it to pop up on our channel, huh? These tiny bats live in the limestone caves along the rivers of Thailand and Burma. An average of 100 individual bats can live in a single cave, and they are sadly also an endangered species. So once again, go online and see what you can do to help these little creatures. Maybe even start a group and meet every week dressing up as Batman characters who swear to save these tiny little guys. Never mind, I called this on that idea, but you are all welcome to join me. Number three, the Barbados Thread Snakes. These little boop snoops are considered the smallest snakes in the world. If you didn't know any better, you would think they were some kind of worm at first glance. They are so small that they can fit comfortably on a quarter. If you weren't able to guess by the title, these living spaghetti noodles are usually found in tropical climates, specifically Barbados, and they were actually discovered pretty recently. It was first identified as a separate species in 2008, and their size makes it no wonder why we haven't met them before. He literally just found one under a rock and was like, huh, that looks new. They are passionate nocturnal burrowers and don't often come out unless they need to feed. Their diet mainly consists of ants and termites, and I think this is really cool. The pheromones they excrete prevents them from being eaten by termites themselves. Cool, right? Thread snakes are also only able to produce one egg at a time, as they just aren't big enough for more than one. The eggs are already minuscule, and if they were any smaller, the species wouldn't be able to survive. Like many on this list, they are also on the critically endangered list due to habitat loss. At our number two spot, we have the Pedophryne onomensis, or the much easier name to call them, the world's smallest frog. Thank you for that one. They also take the smallest vertebrate and smallest amphibian title on Earth. This tiny frog was first discovered in New Guinea back in 2009. It's a new species that doesn't even have a proper name yet, which is why they have such the difficult name that I probably couldn't say earlier. Its average body size is 0.3 inches, or 7.7 .7 millimeters in length, and they are smaller than a dime. It's no wonder that these guys were only discovered in 2009, because not only are they so tiny that anyone can barely see them, they also camouflage in with the leaf litter of tropical forests. So if any of you guys find yourselves in tropical forests of New Guinea, maybe take a magnifying glass and watch your step for these tiny frogs. And last but not least, the Brucheesia micra chameleon. And here we are in our number one spot is a chameleon who is barely the size of the tip of a match. A creature so small we only discovered them back in 2012. It is so small it can sit comfortably on the tip of your pinky. These little cold blooded lizards only grow to about 29 millimeters. That's smaller than some insects. It can be found on Madagascar. Love Madagascar, I feel like that's where all the strangest animals are. Which is coincidentally one of the places the largest lizard is found. But unlike their larger counterpart, Brachysia chameleons can use their tail to climb, while other chameleons cannot. Albeit they can't climb very high, only about 4 inches off the ground. But that probably seems like a 10 story building to these little guys. Success is relative after all. But that being said, despite their efforts, they are relatively easy to catch if you find them, though you might not be able to for long. This tiny little species is endangered due to significant habitat loss, though it probably doesn't help that if you see one you can literally just pick it up and there's no fight in that at all. So, Number 10, cockroaches. Nice. Hope you're eating a snack right off the bat. I've been playing a lot of Fallout 4 recently. Cockroaches are going to outlive all of us. Apparently, you see it in movies, you see it in comic books, games. These little guys can survive anything and they're really gross to look at, and they're fast. They can survive a literal apocalypse, however that may look. There are over 4,000 species of cockroaches, believe it or not, and they can withstand high levels of radiation, and they're on track right now to outlast all of our insecticides. 
This is so scary. I'm alarmed while I'm doing this. While these creepy crawlies are exposed to toxins, they quickly evolve right there in front of our very eyes. They can evolve on the spot. We're literally making them stronger right now. Although cockroaches will live two years at most, females give birth to around 300 offspring at a time. I just got goosebumps, that's horrible. I'm not a fan of bugs, but, well, we're at number 10, so it's gonna get worse. Number nine, mosquitoes. These little bloodsuckers have been around since the age of dinos. They're all over you when you're outside, when you're camping, all of a sudden you're scratching all weekend and it's not fun. They're annoying, but when it comes to the Amazon rainforest, mosquitoes there are much worse than you could ever imagine. Mosquitoes are one of the most dangerous because, well, for starters, they can fly. That ought to be pretty helpful. And you don't see them coming, and by the time you do, it's far too late, that's it. If you travel to parts of the Amazon rainforest and you don't have yellow fever vaccinations or extremely strong mosquito repellent, well, you're gonna have a very bad time, my friend. These suckers are literally just clouds of malaria just waiting for you to walk into. Even cottages, I can't do it. I have to wear the net the costume around my head the whole time. I feel like a knight when I wear one of those, but you know what, I feel safe. Number eight, box jellyfish. Let's go under the sea for a hot minute. We talked about the blue ring octopus on here before, so, you know, what other haunting discovery lurks below the waves? Box jellyfish, of course, also not wise to touch, so don't think about it. But Australian box jellyfish specifically, they have plenty of venom. They're super deadly, and it doesn't help that they're practically transparent in the ocean. They're like little bags of skin going by. I don't know why I said bags of skin. That's an odd thing to say. You won't see them coming at all. They're just clear blobs that float towards you. And its tentacles can sting you with its millions of nematocysts. Also, peeing on your leg won't solve this problem. It's not gonna work this time, pal, all right? Zip up, not a good idea. Australian box jellyfish carries around toxins that cause extreme pain, paralysis, delirium, cardiac arrest, and or even death, all within five minutes or less. You won't even have time to get your goggles off and ask for help. You'll be done, just like that. One jellyfish has enough venom to kill 60 adults. Yikes, I'm never swimming again in the ocean. Specifically, not with 59 other adults, that's for sure. That's a bad setup. Number seven, black caiman. If you aren't a fan of alligators or things with a lot of teeth, you might wanna to skip to the next one. Black caiman is the largest family member in the Alligatoridae crew. Alligatoridae crew, Alligatoridae, that sounds like a spell. Alligatoridae, turn you into a Alligatoridae. These super alligators live in calm, slow moving rivers. Places you really wouldn't expect, you know, a dinosaur to jump out at you all of a sudden. Just like dangerous river snakes, these black caiman will take it slow and wait for their prey to have a sip of water. And then the largest predator in the Amazon will grab its lunch in a second and then quickly return to the water. You won't even see them. They'll just grab it and go. Maybe they'll do that twisty thing that's terrifying. Birds, reptiles, mammals, this thing can and will eat everything. Between 2008 and October 2013 alone, there were 43 black caiman attacks on people, and a handful of these were sadly fatal. Number six, the green anaconda. Remember the movie Anaconda with Ice Cube in it? That was a great time, that was cool. This movie came out 25 years ago, and I still remember it to this day. It made me extremely afraid of snakes and the water, and also Ice Cube. I thought every snake was like a 30 foot long snake after this, it was not a good time. But just how accurate was that film? Although the green anaconda is a non-venomous snake, the boa constrictor is still one of the most feared. Green anacondas specifically live in calm marshes or slow streams. Again, they wait until their large prey gets thirsty, and then once they come to the water, the anaconda surfaces and suffocates its lunch. Yeah, anacondas hunt prey that's larger than us humans, so if they wanted to, they could for sure eat us. There's only no evidence of it happening because humans rarely interact with them in the first place which is a pretty funny st statistic, I guess. So anacondas don't know that they can eat us yet. So let's stay away just for, just for good measure. Green anacondas can reach lengths of up to 30 feet long. So plenty of space for you and yours. Number five, the devil worm. I mean, its name certainly sounds confident and scary. What is this thing? A worm from the underworld. Of course, this thing can survive it all. Even apocalypse, probably. This guy's literally from hell. The devil worm is a type of nematode, and it looks pretty haunting only under a microscope. In person, you can't really see it, but then when you look, 
it's the worst thing you've ever seen. The thing that sets this little devil apart from the rest of these bugs or creatures, whatever you want to call it, is that it doesn't need oxygen to survive. And it can do so in complete darkness and under the most extreme pressure. The devil worm is the deepest living animal on earth, hence its cool and haunting nickname. Number four, the cave robber spider. Also a cool nickname, but I don't like spiders, so I did, <laughs> here we go. The worst thing ever, welcome back to Bumblebee. The cave robber spider, or troglaraptor, can't tell which name is worse, I guess, is a quick cave predator that has a fun little addition over your standard spider. How neat is that? The cave robber has claws on the end of its legs, just to make it even worse. The cave robber likes to hang from its web from the top of, you guessed it, pitch black caves, and when it feels something a little too close for comfort passing below, it snaps its prey with its claws. One would compare it to a praying mantis only in dark caves, and also a terrifying spider on the ceiling that you don't see. Stellar combo, if you ask me personally. If you live in Southwest Oregon, I'm so sorry. Please don't go in any caves. Number three, the Black Widow. Another spider, just cause I hate myself. We've all heard about this spider, but just how bad is her bite? The Black Widow is not only one, extremely painful, but two, it's incredibly toxic. Now at first, you may not even feel anything. You may think you were bitten by a mosquito. There's slight irritation on the skin at first, nothing too bad, but an hour later, huh, it is much, much worse. Now the ball's rolling. You'll be disoriented, you'll be dizzy, you'll be nauseous, your breathing will become difficult, all because of one little bite. Male black widows are much smaller and they contain much less venom than that of the female. A fact that you may have heard about the spider already that I can't get over personally is that the female black widow actually begins eating the male while they're mating, while they're getting it on. Top 10 ways to spice up your spider marriage. You won't believe number four. That is brutal, oh, those poor guys. Now this is called Latrodectus mirabilis and it's now the scariest thing that I've ever heard. If you do get bit, just relax, take it slow and breathe because luckily we have an anti-venom for this bite. Number two, scorpions. I always say I'm afraid of spiders and that's for sure a fact, but I'm sleeping on scorpions. They're a horrible combination of everything scary. Scorpions can survive in deserts, rainforests, some mountains. I mean, I don't want to alarm anybody here on Bumblebee, but they're kind of everywhere. I don't know, one might be under your bed right now as you're watching this, right as you're clicking that thumbs up right now, right as you're hitting subscribe right now. A scorpion can be hitting subscribe. A scorpion can subscribe with its stinger, you know? Sometimes you'll find a scorpion completely frozen outside. It's immobile and otherwise dead. But as time passes on, keep an eye on it because some researchers would watch for these frozen scorpions and watch and wait for them to come back to life. They can do that. They slow their metabolism rate enough so if need be, they can live off of one insect a year. Bet you didn't know that, right? Terrifying, you're welcome. And finally, number one, ants. Small but mighty and they come in thousands and they travel up your window and into your house. Ants are so scary, we have to talk about them. There's thousands of species of ants. We've talked about the bullet ant on here before and how their bites feel like a bullet wound. Their sting is considered the most powerful in the world and its effects can last 24 hours. That alone is a scary individual ant. But these guys come in all different shapes and sizes. The feature that allows them to survive for so long, of course, they can live deep in the ground, but they also sacrifice each other. That's the thing they do every day. They grab an ant and they're like, Huh? and they just throw them off of a curb or something. If one ant is sick or injured, they'll all decide, as an ant group, that it's that ant's time to go. That's crazy, these guys are ruthless. How wild is that? They do this to ensure the safety of the rest of the colony. So that it doesn't get sick or, you know, it doesn't slow anyone down. That's brutal, that is ruthless. They're like little Vikings with antenna. They've been around for a very, very long time and there's no reason to believe that any apocalypse can hold any ant or an ant colony back. I'm terrified, I spilled a drink yesterday, now I feel like there's ants everywhere. What do I do? Starting off in our number 10 spot, we have the Megalodon. I am starting this list off with my favorite prehistoric sea monster, the infamous Megalodon. Megalodons are one of the largest sharks to have ever existed. They were huge, they were terrifying, they were apex predators, and they are the creatures that inspired the tail 
tails of Jaws, or the Meg. The teeth on these sharks are so large that they are three times larger than the teeth of a modern great white shark. With teeth that size, you can only imagine how large this shark would have been. It's pretty tough to figure out exactly why the Megalodon died out. I mean, they were one of the largest, scariest creatures who shouldn't have had any trouble getting food, but that might not be the case. Some believe it was the cooling water, others believe it was competition for food. Whatever the case, in the end, while the Megalodon is an incredible creature in history, I think we can all breathe a sigh of relief that they aren't swimming around our oceans anymore. In our number nine spot today, we have the Plesiosaurus. These guys are a prehistoric creature that was massive and grew to be about 43 feet long. They had these super long necks that basically took up like half of their body, and even though they were so massive, they had no trouble moving efficiently through the water. These creatures had four flippers, so our best guess as to how they swam would be sort of like a penguin. Their front limbs did most of the work, while the back ones kind of took hold of the steering. Fossils have been able to show us that these creatures gave birth to live young and are actually kind of similar to dolphins in the way that they take care of their young. It is thought that these just may be the creatures that inspired the tales of the Loch Ness Monster. In our number 8 spot today, we have the Basilosaurus. These guys have a name that translates to King Lizard, and they are a genus of large, predatory, prehistoric whales that lived during the Eocene, which was approximately 41.3 to 33.9 million years ago. These guys were actually first described in 1834, which makes them the first prehistoric whale known to science. These guys were one of the largest, if not the largest, of their time, and they were the top predators of their environment. They preyed on sharks, large fish, other marine animals, including the dolphin-like Darudon. Really, they were able to eat basically anything that they felt like. These guys even had teeth that were various types, like canines and molars, which probably allowed these creatures to chew their food, which is different to their more modern ancestors. In our number 7 spot today, we have the Pliosaurus, another massive prehistoric creature. Also not to be confused with the Plesiosaurus, I was confused in the beginning. These guys grew to be around 40 feet long. And about the size of some of the whales that we would see today. These creatures are best known for their insane hunting abilities. They could move quickly and were quite strong. This effective predator skill set, coupled with their massive size, allowed them the ability to take down much larger prey, sometimes even dinosaurs. According to experts, these guys had exceptionally strong jaws. Some even believe that it might have had a bite just as powerful as a T Rex, which is, of course, known for having one of the most powerful bites of any land animal. I'm just saying, these guys were definitely a top predator in their day. In our number six spot today, we have the Jacalopterus. Okay. I've got three words for you. Giant sea scorpion. Yeah, remind me to never go into the prehistoric ocean. This eight foot long arthropod lived in the water with its gross, two large pincers and claws, and honestly, it looks like something out of the movie Alien. These guys had segmented bodies, and they're actually the largest known arthropod to have ever existed here on Earth. They had multiple specialized limbs, and some of them even had spikes. Like, for example, their 18 inch spiked claw that was used to snatch fish that passed by. It is said that some of these guys would crawl out of the water in order to mate and sometimes shed their outer skin, and all I have to say is imagine finding an 8 foot long molt of one of these creatures on the beach right before you jump in for a swim. You wouldn't, right? I'd swear off all water after that. In our number 5 spot today, we have the Helicoprion. Okay, listen, there are many problems with our modern world. We could sit here all day talking about them. We could even go into next week, there are so many. But here's the thing we need to realize. Things could be so much worse, and by worse, I mean that this creature could still exist. This animal existed somewhere around 250 million years ago, and while it looks more like a shark than anything else, scientists now know that it was actually a creature that is related more closely to chimeras, which are a fish that separated from the shark family about 400 million years ago. So why is this animal so scary and just terrible to look at? Well, that is due to the incredibly unsettling spiral saw formation of teeth that this creature had right on their lower jaw. Yeah, an orthodontist's dream, truly. It's also not like this creature was just born with the teeth that they had for the rest of their lives. No, of course not. They had teeth that could grow and new teeth could even form. Imagine being in the ocean and you see a huge creature swim up to you that has four spiral saws for teeth. Yeah, no thanks. 
In our number four spot today, we have the Mosasaurus. During the Cretaceous period, which spanned about 145.5 to 65.5 million years ago, there was this genus of reptiles called Mosasaurus. These guys were absolutely huge aquatic reptiles that roamed throughout the waterways here on Earth. Because of their size, they became apex predators during this time, and they have been estimated to have grown to about 56 feet. At the time of their existence, it isn't exactly likely that they would have encountered any sharks that are alarmingly large like the Megalodon was, but I mean the Cretaceous period certainly had some other massive creatures that put up some pretty stiff competition. This is of course, like I mentioned, an entire genus, so there are definitely some less threatening species in the mix, but there are some in there who would have given the Meg a run for their money should they have existed at the same time. In our number 3 spot today, we have the Leviathan. If we were to look at our ocean today, we of course would see sharks as one of the top predators that exist. I mean, some sharks are huge, and they certainly know how to hunt, but they aren't the only scary creatures roaming the oceans. Sometimes killer whales make such a grand appearance that they even scare off some of the most terrifying sharks and make them flee for incredible distances. This is something that was also seen many, many, many years ago, I mean millions of years ago during the time of the Megalodon, and that is thanks to this gigantic creature known as the Leviathan. If you are unfamiliar, this is a now extinct genus of macroraptorial sperm whale. It is believed that they could weigh around 100,000 pounds and reach up to 57 feet in length, and it's thought that their size is what helped repel other predators while also helping them become the predator themselves. The Leviathan also had enormous teeth, teeth that reached over a foot in length, which is what gave them the title of largest bite of any tetrapod. In our number 2 spot today, we have the Chronosaurus. This Cretaceous marine reptile is one that had an elongated head, a short neck, and a stiff body that was propelled by not just one, but two sets of fins that helped it get through the water and through strong currents in order to capture whatever prey it was after. These guys were somewhere around 30 to 40 feet in length, and they had many, many long, sharp conical teeth, with some of them being enlarged to be fangs. So yeah, I mean, what more could you want from a terrifying sea creature? Along with the fossils found of these guys, experts have been able to determine some of the stuff they ate, and it includes turtles, as well as other pliosaurs, which these guys are a part of that genus, meaning they basically ate their own family. In our number one spot today, we have the Mausaurus. These guys are a creature that was once very real, but thankfully are a relic of our past because they are absolutely horrifying. They are named after the Maori god Maui, who is said to have pulled the islands of New Zealand up from the sea floor, so anything named after him is of course going to be an absolute ginormous beast. The neck of this creature measured around 49 feet long, which is the longest proportionate neck of any animal. The entire creature is measured around 66 feet, so it is clear that their neck counted for quite a a large portion of their body. But like, imagine a swimming dinosaur creature with a huge snake for a neck. That's kind of what these guys were like. These guys lived on Earth during the Cretaceous period, which is good news for us, but not so much for the creatures that lived at the time. Creatures would jump into the water to avoid a T-Rex, only to find this guy waiting for them. Yeah, mm-mm, no thanks. Number 10, the woolly mammoth. What two things are big, loud, hairy, smell like Parmesan cheese, and frequent the New York area? If you said Ray Romano and Wooly Mammoths, then you're correct. It all comes full circle. Starting off with an easy one for you today, and folks, it's one of my favorites. A creature that's been long extinct. Comedians and primetime family sitcoms. No, I'm just kidding. I'm talking about woolly mammoths, the large animals that once roamed the earth. Since these are so common, I thought it would be very fun to do a tale of the tape. Standing anywhere between 2.7 to 3.8 meters tall in the red corner, weighing in a full six tons, the beast from the east, woolly mammoth. Okay, well, they weren't just found in the east, but they were big and interesting creatures, especially since this is one of the few ancient species that we've ever interacted with. Having thick skin and fur made them difficult to hunt. It would take a few blows. However, if a smaller one was taken, it would make for a lasting meal. Interesting creatures. Number nine, Glyptodon. Take an armadillo, size that bad boy up, give it a spicy tail, take away its ability to curl up in a ball, and make it stupid looking, and you've got the 10 foot long, 1 ton glyptodon that lived 2 million to 10,000 years ago. Now, it would be easy to mistake this guy with a turtle or a tortoise, but it was in fact a mammal. It also had a soft underbelly that any predator able to flip over this walking Volkswagen beetle would be able to exploit. 
These guys were native to South America and like I said they actually were around for a long time, living just past the last ice age. It's believed like with most things, us humans had a not so small part to play in their disappearance from this world. We would hunt them for food and for their shells, which evidence says ancient man used as shelter from snow and rain. Number 8 Titanoboa I actually didn't know this one existed either. There's going to be a trend of large and scary animals here. Well, in the northeastern part of Colombia, a true beast lay still in the jungle, just waiting for a prey to dare come across its path. What would a titan boa do if prey came its way? Well, just like its smaller counterpart, it would constrict until you went for a big nap where you would then most likely be swallowed whole. Ugh. Well, at least that's what horror films would want you to think. As recent studies suggest, they may have actually only had a diet of fish. If you've ever been on a school field trip to a zoo and got to pet the animals, the boa constrictor is always one of those animals. I don't know why, they always got one on hand. Just in their pockets, weird, wouldn't fit. But Which I don't know why, because if you've ever felt the power of those muscles, well, it would be a very memorable field trip. Just try and imagine that upscale by 10. I'm glad this one went extinct a long time ago. That's too big of a snake. Too much power. Too, too much. Number 7. Basilosaurus When I hear the word basil, I think of a lovely smelling herb. Oh, I think of old basil, a kind old man, probably with white hair and a big bald spot and a mustache. Now, thanks to this video, I will think of a 65 foot long sea monster with a 3 foot head and a bite force as strong as a T-Rex. Whales have been around for a heck of a long time, and they have had many different ancestors and cousins. All of them were different levels of odd and terrifying. Basil here was one of the earliest identified ones. It was fairly different from its modern descendants, as you can tell from these pictures. It had a longer eel-like body with that tiny head. It only weighed about 10 tons, which is odd for a whale. Being the ancestor of whales, Basilosaurus is a marine mammal, but for a long long time it was actually mistaken for a marine reptile, like the Mosasaur, being given the nickname King Lizard, which is doubly odd because it wasn't even the biggest whale species. That would be the Leviathan Killer Whale. I think I remember why I'm terrified of the sea. Yeah. Number 6 Saber Toothed Tiger What's scarier than a full grown tiger? How about a fully grown tiger with teeth the size of bowie knives? Wow. Sometimes nature is scary and makes me question reality. The saber toothed tigers are one of those things. A saber toothed tiger's diet consisted of large animals, so watch out Willie Mammoth and maybe Ray Romano. Obviously, most recognized for the protruding large canine teeth that sit outside the mouth even when closed, making for great puncture weapons, as if the large cats needed any more help hunting their prey. Coming into being around the same size as a large Siberian tiger, this is one hefty kitty, and one you wouldn't want to mess with. Fortunately for me and the club of extremely cute gentlemen who cannot run very fast, I do not have to worry about outrunning the speedy, beefy predator. Their extinction is connected to both climate change and a lack of food. Number 5. The Giant Sloth If all of your information about prehistoric giant ground sloths was gathered from watching the animated Ice Age movies, buckle up. For starters, some of these guys were as big as elephants and one of the biggest land mammals. Other versions were as big as oxen or bears, so these suckers were pretty beefy, which I'm sure Sid the Sloth would be happy to hear. They also mostly walked on all fours, although they probably did stand on their hind legs to reach the top of trees and possibly as a defensive tactic. Ice Age was somewhat correct about how they were a little odd. For example, they probably did actually waddle thanks to their giant feet. They also oddly had teeth on the sides of their mouths used for crushing plants. The giant ground sloths are unsurprisingly related to our modern day sloths, but also to anteaters and armadillos. They were mainly South American mammals, but had different versions all over the Americas from 35 million to 11,000 years ago, until around the time of the Ice Age. Number 4 Gigantopithecus Put your hands together if you want to clap as I take you through this monkey rap. DK, Donkey Kong, you know what I'm saying? Ah, great game, although I never understood why his name is Donkey Kong. 
I digress. Why am I bringing up one of Nintendo's beloved mascots? Well, that's because I'm talking giant ape, baby. That's right. Gigantopithecus was a large ape that lived in Southeast Asia, some parts of China, and Vietnam. Coming in at a whopping 660 pounds, DK here would need to eat a lot of plants, which, judging by teeth and molars and other great apes, suggests he was a herbivore. At least I hope. I'm just gonna keep calling him DK because otherwise I'll be here all day with my dyslexia, but DK is most closely related to orangutans. However, 100,000 years ago, after some severe climate changes and food shortages, DK was no more. And it was game over. Number three, Terror Bird. Such a fitting name. This carnivorous bird became the top predator in South America after the dinosaurs went bye bye. This bird had about 25 different species, ranging from 1 to 3 meters or 10 feet in height. That's a big bird! Some species could have been scavengers, but others, oh, they were definitely apex predators. Some had big, strong, stout legs that were probably good for kicking prey or even crushing bones with big curved claws or talons for stabby behavior. They had big skulls with bones that were fused together, unlike a lot of birds, which was probably useful for pecking things into the afterlife with their massive sharp beaks that were also likely useful for getting big, nasty, fleshy bites. Their closest living relatives in South America today take out their prey by picking it up and slamming it into the ground over and over and over and over again. So imagine that, but from a giant 10 foot angry ostrich with a giant beak. So yeah, terror bird, it's a good name. Number two, giant beaver. Yeah, my Aunt Flo used to have a bear-sized beaver. Too bad it ran away. Okay, all jokes aside, giant beavers, also known as castoroids. That's a strange name. First discovered in the very busy and important state of Ohio back in 1837, these fossils pop up anywhere from Toronto all the way down to Florida. Hmm. Getting as large as 7 feet long and just shy of 300 pounds. This is a beaver whose dam you don't want to break. Despite how awesome the giant beavers were, they are now extinct. And despite the Hudson Bay companies or the dismay of French Canadian fur trappers, the beaver went extinct thousands of years ago. Today we are unsure what made them go ext Today we are unsure what made them go extinct. Some suggest hunting, uh, but we're not even sure if they existed along early humans. All I know is that a tail on that bad boy would be very dangerous. Seriously, people don't think the beavers are dangerous, but you got to be careful around them. And I salute the beaver as it is Canada's national animal after all. Number one, Andrew Sarkis. And here we are, Andrew's ancient relative, the Andrew Sarkis. The name Andrew Sarkis was given as a dedication to Roy Chapman Andrews, who I share a last name with, so maybe I'm related too. Who can say? Andrew's such a unique name, isn't it? Which is fitting because this bad boy right here was unique. Its massive three foot skull was very similar to a wolf skull, but its jaw and tooth structure made it more like a mesonicket, which are related to horses and deers, but also relatives to whales and hippos. It was a giant hoofed carnivore, like a mix between a pig and a wolf, but massive. It probably ate literally anything it could get its jaws around. It could have been anything from tinier mammals to plants and roots to giant herbivores related to rhinos. If I ran into a huge hoofed pig wolf capable of taking down rhinos, I'd just lay down and give up. Luckily, it lived 45 to 35 million years ago in Asia, specifically the area around and near modern day Mongolia. And Andrew Sarkis did not adapt well to the changing times and didn't last as long as other ancient creatures on this list. Just like Andrew, we're still trying to figure out exactly what kind of animal Andrew Sarkis was. Number 10, Basilosaurus. Sounds like a basilisk. You may be thinking, is she about to say that basilisks are real? Am I wrong? Probably. I don't know you. How are you? How's your day going? Me? I feel like I'm developing thalassophobia. I don't even know how to say that right. Welcome everyone to the Basilosaurus, an evil shark snake whale that actually existed on the planet for a while there. Of course, they were massive, growing to 50 to 85 feet long in size, but its size was about the only thing it had going for it, sadly. It couldn't echolocate, couldn't deep dive or breach, just had to kinda chill at one level. Theoretically, if you did see it while swimming, it couldn't and wouldn't chase you if you dove too deep or climbed up on land, because why would it? It looked terrifying and could kill you, but this creature was probably the one who only ever earned a participation badge in terms of most terrifying creature in the sea. If you're like me, you started out scared, but now you just kind of feel bad for the guy. There's a reason he didn't survive. Number nine, Tanistropius. 
It's a water giraffe! Canistrophius is essentially a water giraffe, except with short legs and a super long neck stretching up to 20 feet long. It could literally be standing on the ocean floor and just have its like head poking up with a submarine telescope, just like. Which apparently is exactly what it did when hunting for food. Its front legs were shorter than its back legs, which somehow helped it pitch its neck above the surface to hunt for lunch on land. Fossils of the creature have been found near the waters of Europe and the Middle East and China, but exactly how much time they spent in the water versus on land is still debated. We may never know unless we find a mosquito or something conserved in resin that provides us with enough genetic info so we can bring them back to life. But that'll never happen, will it? Number eight, Jake Calopterus. If you're having a bad day, then I have just the words to comfort you. Giant sea scorpion. You see? Nothing could be worse than that, except there is. I'm glad nature decided that we didn't need this and that they went extinct. It existed long before the dinosaurs and was a victim to the Permian-Triassic extinction event which killed 90% of all life on Earth. One of the largest anthropods to ever exist, it reached about eight feet long, which is about three feet larger than lol me. Nothing really like it exists anymore and its closest existing relatives to some degree is the horseshoe crab. They call it a sea scorpion, but whether its tail actually was venomous, we don't know. Archaeologists aren't sure, but its tail does resemble a scorpion, so they think it could be. Number seven, Helicuprian. Imagine a shark designed to cut pizza into six to eight even slices. That is what a helicuprian was. A prehistoric shark around 270 million years old, best known for its weird vertically circular toothy saw jaw. Paleontologists aren't quite sure as to where exactly its teeth protrude from. Some even consider that it might be attached to the tail or like the side. But the overall consensus was that it sat straight up in the mouth from the lower jaw. A specimen found in 1950 was located in a bay in Idaho, so we know they used to hang around that part of the world a bit. The mouth saw, as we're gonna call it, had 117 teeth and based on a 3D animated model, scientists were able to determine that it did jut up from the lower jaw. Like, like, like what is that? How did it eat? Like, it just doesn't make sense. I'm not really surprised that this guy didn't last because how would you deal with that? How? Number six, Dunkelosteus. It's like a very big turtle mated with a shark and then immediately regretted it. Not as big as some of the other creatures I mentioned, but definitely something even they would hesitate to mess with. This dude wasn't a picky eater in any sense. Weighing at 4,000 tons and measuring 33 feet long, this guy was ready and eager to compete with even the toughest ones on this list. Sharp teeth? Pfft, didn't need them. It used two sharp blades to snap and crush its prey, carving through bone like a hot knife through butter. That's how strong it was. It also had solid bone-like armor near its head that it used as a battering ram against any challengers. I feel like if there were mythical civilizations, this would be like the perfect underwater steed. It was made for war. But also, this was one of the creatures and probably one of the first to ever have to engage in coitus in order to reproduce. So sure, some would say they were fighters, but underneath that hard shell, they were lovers too. They obviously weren't very good at it because they're extinct now. Before we go any further, remember to hit that like button and subscribe as always for more, especially if you're new here, you, you like us, come on, like it, subscribe, we love it. Number five, Dirk Maharaja Krozi. This one is actually a more recent discovery made in the past 60-ish years. The Dirk Mahara is Gaelic for marine lizard, which is exactly what it was, kind of. It's best described as what would happen if you made it a crocodile with a dolphin. Flipper, but scalier. Fossil remains were pieced together like prehistoric Jenga after they were first discovered in 1959. Finally, in January 2015, scientists announced a new genus of ichthyosaur. This creature predates the Jurassic period and was probably one of the head honchos around that time. Had it lived long enough into the Jurassic period, it would probably have been gobbled up considering the creatures who came after were huh, quite a bit larger as we'll discover. Number four, pliosaur. So we've talked about massive, more terrifying versions of things on this list. But we couldn't leave out a warped version of a crocodile, now could we? Growing to about 59 feet in length and lived around 155 million years ago, this thing could swallow a Dirk Mahara in one bite. Not surprising, since its jaw was about the size of the average human, complete with razor sharp gnashers. According to fossils found in England and Norway, this creature resembles a crocodile in very similar ways, aside from its long paddle-shaped limbs. 
This allowed it to swim at insanely fast speeds, able to travel around six miles per hour. Archaeologists have found the remains of mainly mollusks and other marine reptiles in its stomach, but more terrifyingly, other dinosaurs. Jury is still out as to whether they took the creatures down themselves or feasted on any remains they found, the latter being more likely. Number three, the Megalodon. Scared of sharks? Well, maybe skip ahead because we are about to talk about the guy we are all grateful doesn't exist anymore. The Megalodon. Two words, Big Daddy. This guy was bigger than a school bus with giant teeth ready to tear into ambitious prey like whales and whatever else it felt like. Fossils of this mammoth of nightmares have been found across the world from Europe to Africa to North America. This beast had no boundaries and of course, when you're as big as this guy, why would you? It's a common belief that they coexisted with dinosaurs, but they actually missed them by around 40 million years. They actually lived around 2.6 to 1.5 million years ago, which implies it may have been around four humans. The reason they went extinct, however, is assumed because of the ice age, the Megalodon enjoyed warm waters and it might've diminished its food supply, so. Thanks, nature. It's fast. Number two, Leviathan Melvilli, the ultimate killer whale. The whale so big it had to eat other whales. And also, if you're wondering if I'm meaning to say Leviathan, I'm not. Though it was originally Leviathan, they had to change it because it was taken. So Leviathan it is. If you've heard the horrific story of Moby Dick, then this would be the whale that they face, though probably not because they were extinct long before the book was even written. They lived around 12 to 13 million years ago during the Miocene Epoch and could grow up to 45 to 60 feet. The head alone was around three meters long. On top of their immense size, they had a terrifying set of sharp, deep-rooted teeth, each about the size of a two-liter bottle of pop, which is more than double the size of a T-Rex's teeth. So with big teeth needs big game and the Leviathan rose to the occasion. From large squids to other whales, the Leviathan was a force to be reckoned with and one I never ever want to encounter. So if there's a trip going back in time, count me out. Number one, the Tylosaurus. It sounds massive, it is massive. It makes you glad you weren't around 65 million years ago. The Tylosaurus was a water-bound lizard who had strong, sturdy limbs that evolved to eventually walk on land. Not a pleasant thought. Its gaping mouth allowed it to swallow creatures whole, or if it couldn't do that, its strong jaws and razor-sharp teeth took care of that. It could grow to the length of 45 feet. I'm 5'6", so it could fit about eight of me. The remains of the great creature have been found all across Texas and Kansas. And if you love the 2015 Jurassic World film, you got a glimpse of the massive monster. Here's a clip to remind you. Did you, did you freak out when it jumped out? Gotcha. Number 10, the bulldog rat. Right off the bat, I wanna throw up. Of course, being way larger than black rats, the bulldog rat was thankfully, thankfully, last seen around 1903. We did it, we just successfully dodged these ones. The same time speed walking was introduced to the world. Coincidence? Absolutely not. Everyone was avoiding these big hairy That's my theory. They have two to three centimeters of fat on their backs with short tails and thick hair. There's absolutely nothing holly and or jolly about the bulldog rat, except for the fact that its home was that of Christmas Island in the Indian Ocean. Yeah, welcome to Christmas Island. It's not what you think at all. They were thriving until sailors discovered the island. And with them, they brought infected black rats. So only sailors were responsible for this extinction event. Yeah, they pulled up to Christmas Island and then they released some gifts. Gifts of rats, infected rats, that now made other rats extinct. Either way, I don't like rats. Any rats, extinct or currently living. Next, number nine, Helicoprion. Perhaps one of the weirdest looking sea creatures to exist 250 million years ago. Again, yes, we dodged it, thank God. We got a little close, a little close, but we narrowly missed it. This looks like a shark, but scientists now know that it was related to chimeras, a fish that separated from the shark family 400 million years ago. Again, dodge those too. This 25 foot long fish was first discovered by Andrzej Zarpinski in Russia back in 1889. He got the name Helicoprion because it translates to spider saw, hence it's horribly disgusting awesome mouth. This guy found teeth fossilized in a spiral formation. He must have thought that he found aliens. He must have been scratching his head for weeks. Paleontologists all agree today that this was not part of a fin. It wasn't a wacky spinal cord either, but rather this coil was teeth. Yeah, teeth coiled up attached to the lower jaw of the fish. And its grasp was the same power roughly to that of a crocodile, so 
You can put two and two together and now not sleep. Just like me. Number eight, Dire Wolves. And hi to that new Game of Thrones show coming out. Can't wait, here we go. Let's talk about some Westeros animals because these ones were real. Dire Wolves. About 10,000 years ago, Dire Wolves were still a thing. We could have owned these as pets. It would have been so scary, but I would have liked it. Canis Dyrus comes in at around the same size as a gray wolf. So it's not a mega wolf with three heads or anything insane, but it did weigh a lot more because it was eating a lot more, yeah. Their jaws were much stronger, so crushing animal bones wasn't a problem. And they would actually hunt down and eat horses. Yeah, how terrifying is that? If I saw that, I would, <laughs> I would cry so much. After studying their teeth, that was their go-to snack, turns out, nice. Currently, if you're in the market for seeing 400 dire wolf skulls, head to the Page Museum in Southern California. Yeah, they found hundreds of thousands of skulls in the tar pits. Imagine that. Oh, what is this? Thousands of skulls, damn, thought it was treasure. Number seven, the devil frog. Catching frogs is a great way to pass the time as a kid or as an adult who's just, you know, doing his own thing at the cottage. But 68 million years ago, if you saw a frog, you would have to run away immediately. It was bad news, especially if it was the devil frog. The devil frog would leave you without a nose. Yeah, it was, got a big chomp. Hear that? It was a lot louder than that, probably like, I can see it spiking up, that's so stupid. It was a lot bigger than frogs today, as most of these things are. It was on average the same size as a beach ball, and they lived on the island of Madagascar. Sounds like fun, but it wasn't at all. They thrived there because no theropod dinosaurs could get there, you know what I mean? And its bite is similar to a wolf or tiger, so really, nothing wanted to mess with it. It's like, yeah, have Madagascar, enjoy it. We're not gonna try and f with you. Recently, however, researchers found a fossil of the devil frog and they believe it once had spikes and a turtle-like shell. Yeah, as if the devil frog couldn't get any cooler and or scarier, now we know they had spikes. Throw in spikes as well, like it's a Mario dinosaur. Right now, currently, we have the horned frog, which is a lot, a lot smaller, but even after this many million years of evolution, its jaw is also remarkably strong. It'll still take off your finger, you know? Little guy. Much smaller, but still, a bite. Number six, Mega Piranha. Whew, talk about a bite. Here we go. Mega Piranha sounds like a Marvel Comics villain from the 70s. Is this real? Please tell me these weren't real. Growing up, I thought piranhas would be way more of an issue, to be honest. I haven't ran into any of those, and I'm not complaining. That sounds terrifying. Mega Piranhas, back in the day, for starters, they were much bigger than today's piranhas. They came in at about one meter long. They ruled the water surrounding Argentina, so six million years ago, you know, you wouldn't be taking any late night skinny dips, that's for sure. Its bite force was 50 times its own weight, which is scary for a 30 pound fish. Yeah, all that math, it's a little jarring, isn't it? Its bite can outchomp Megalodon, who I may or may not mention in a little bit. Even today, the word piranha instills fear. Our modern day black piranha weighs two pounds, but its razor sharp teeth and its bite force is still so deadly. Also, they've made way too many piranha movies. They gotta, they gotta stop. Piranha 3D, the 4, 4DX, piranha moving chairs, mist. I don't know, they're doing way too much shit in movie theaters. They have a thing now, it's called smell o vision or something, where you watch a movie and you can smell the scene, which is odd. Imagine watching the human centipede and smell of vision. Number five, Arthoplura. These creepy crawlies translate to jointed ribs. That's what their name means, jointed ribs. That's lovely, there we go. Arthoplura were these gigantic millipedes. Yeah, they would grow up to six feet long. Sorry, Jen, I forgot about these ones. These are kind of bugs. It was the largest known invertebrate ever. It ruled all over the arthropods, so any other spider, insect, crustacean, you name it, nothing compared to this horror. Nothing compares to you, six foot millipede, yuck. They roamed the land during the Paleozoic period. They would crawl around at much higher speeds than today's millipedes, which is still so fast, way too fast. And they ate any decomposing organic matter. So no, they wouldn't gobble you up if you went back in time. The reason all these monster bugs got so large, by the way, was because 300 million years ago, oxygen made up 30% of the air, whereas now we're only sucking in, <gasps> we're only sucking in 21%. Yeah, we got that dirty hand-me-down air. But also, we have smaller bugs, so I'm not complaining too hard. Number four, Epicion. Much more than just a dog, these extinct canines were known as bone-crushing dogs. Awesome, let's not get these as pets, I guess. They would come in at around five feet long, greatly resembling a grizzly bear, and their massive head would come in handy during hunts, because it had the you know head size of a lion, and its jaw certainly played the part as well. No problem hunting, very fast. Lions, tigers, and bears all rolled up into one furry 300-pound sack of holy shit. 
It was made to crush, literally. Its fourth premolar was enlarged, just like some hyenas, just like bears. This thing too lived in what's now North America. They went extinct about six million years ago, which is pretty recent considering the other scary fossils on this list. Could you imagine camping and all of a sudden this thing comes in? Sorry, runs in or sprints in? I don't know, I'm out of here. Number three, Thylacosmolus. Sounds like a Harry Potter spell, I love it. Marsupials, millions of years ago, they were a little bit weirder than our marsupials today, although they're still odd. They have the weird, scary face. Thylacosmolus, first of all, way better name than opossum. We should have kept that name, if anything. These guys back then looked like saber-toothed tigers, but it's really just a cousin to marsupials today. Its name translates to terrible pouched knife. Awesome nickname. And it used to live in what's now South America. Elmer Riggs discovered the remains of such a beast in the 1920s, but only recently we have now figured out it wasn't related to a cat. Although, looking at it, you're like, eh, I don't know, it looks a little similar. Its teeth are intimidating, don't get me wrong, but this was just a big ass marsupial. And it's an a possum, or an opossum, or b possum. I don't know. I've lost count. Number two, there is no saurus. There is no, there is no saurus. Not anymore, thankfully. No, they've been dead for 75 million years, for sure gone. We love that. Here we go. There's no, there is no saurus anymore. That sounds weird to say. They were also known in history as the reaping lizard, and it was first discovered in 1948. And these guys could grow up to 10 meters long, and they weighed about five tons. So yeah, like the lizard from Spider-Man. You're pretty much if you run into these. But the feature that stands out the most on this long neck raptor looking dinosaur is its massive claws. This thing's got baseball mitts for hands. It's like Freddy Krueger. These hands are way too big for that body. It's like a sports fan just ready to catch a foul ball. This is where the Greeks got the name from. There is a means to reap or to cut off. This was the Freddy Krueger of animals. And thankfully its choice of meals was always a salad. No, it didn't shred up any animals unless it had to in self-defense. So leave this guy alone. The first fossil was discovered in the late 1940s from a Soviet Mongolian fossil expedition and they found the claws first and for 10 years they had no idea what this belonged to. Just terrified people in a lab for 10 years straight. It wasn't until the early 50s until they found more bones and then eventually all the pieces of the puzzle started to fit and they realized uh, it wasn't a turtle. Yeah, that was their first guess, just a big old turtle. Do you imagine that in the water? No fucking way. And finally, number one, Megalodon. Yeah, speaking of water and holy shit, yeah, this thing was very real. Louis Agassiz first discovered the Megalodon shark back in 1843. Wasn't alive though, but it's still scary. He was a Swiss-born American naturalist and geologist. He discovered some amazing details about glacier activity and extinct fish. He is brilliant in history. But one of those extinct fish just happened to be the tooth shark, AKA the Megalodon. It lived everywhere in the world but Antarctica, really. This thing ruled our planet. It favored warm oceans, but similar to a great white, it generates heat when it moves, so it can survive most places. Yeah. Un not great for us, it's swimming in the water. The largest recorded megalodon came in at 59 feet, about the same length as a bowling alley. So if this thing were alive today, there's no chance Jason Statham could take it. No, it's gonna take at least three Jason Stathams, at least. Its seven foot wide jaws had plenty of trunk space for a swimmer, and its five rows of razor sharp teeth ensured said swimmer didn't get out. So I'm glad they're all dead. In a nice way, I don't know, this sounds kind of horrible to say. Number 10. Longisquama. Longisquama is a very crucial genus of extinct reptile. I feel like I already sound like David Attenborough, dude. The Longisquama in Cygnus from the middle to late Triassic formation. That was not bad. That was not bad. Come on. Longisquama means long scales. In Cygnus means small. The Longisquama in Cygnus is notable for a number of long structures that appear to grow from its skin. Little mohawk boys, you know? These things were rad looking. They were diepsids, which was a reptile subclass. A small group of climbing and gliding reptiles. Little jumper dudes. These guys were awesome. Little mohawk tree dudes. They lived in forests located on the supercontinent once called Pangaea. Its most notable feature is a double row of long scale like pins running along its back, forming six to eight pairs. It had one pair of scales for each of its pair of ribs, like knight's armor, little mini tectonic plates mixed with feathers on top, and we get Longisquamous scales. Could be rows of wolverine claws, could be rows of feathers or dragonfly-ish wings. Scientists still don't know. This little mohawk boy is sick though. Little flying dude. Those are definitely little dragonfly wings, I'm calling it. Number nine, Carnotaurus. Okay, Kyle and I, we had a different dinosaur animated movie growing up as kids, okay? Today you've got the little dinosaur that's cute, that's great animation. Back when we were younger, we had the scary dinosaur movie. Remember that one? Where none of them talked with the Carnotaurus guy as the villain? Yeah, that one didn't talk. It was just the scariest thing I've ever seen in my life. I'm pretty sure I walked out of that theater. Didn't say a peep. And this guy didn't have to, really. Look at him. The Carnotaurus was a unit. Yeah, they thankfully disappeared 69 million years ago. 
nice. They were around the same size as a T-Rex, coming in at about 29 feet long, but they were nicknamed meat-eating bulls. So, yeah, that ought to tip you why they were the villains in said movie. They would run at about 25 miles an hour. They're one of the fastest and largest moving theropods to ever live. Its arms were smaller than that of a T-Rex, so we can roast them in some capacity, okay? We got them on some, you know, on something. But honestly, it didn't matter because this one had horns, hence the meat-eating bull alias. It was rediscovered in 1984 by Jose Bonaparte in Argentina. They've only discovered one skeleton of these things, so hopefully there weren't too many of these poking around. Yeah, Aina Linda took me to see this one. I'm pretty sure I walked out. It fucked me up good. The scary guy, he runs out so fast. God, he's so fast. Number eight, Plesiosaurus. Ah yes, the Plesiosaurus. A genus of extinct, very large marine reptile that lived during the early Jurassic period. It is known by nearly complete skeletons from the waters and rocks in England. It is known for its small head, long and slender neck, broad turtle-like body, short tail, and two pairs of large paddles for limbs, and is apparently the legendary, the one and only Loch Ness Monster. Cue the bagpipes. The first complete skeleton of a plesiosaurus was discovered by paleontologist and fossil hunter Mary Anning in Jurassic Age rocks December 1823. Plesiosaurus are moderate size compared to what it was swimming around them at the time, usually only about 5 meters in length, and about 500 pounds. They had the head like a big pit bull, and the teeth like a big pit bull. They fed mainly on clams and snails. Okay, this is like a medium scary now, all of a sudden. Number seven the great auk. Once thriving in colonies off North Atlantic coasts, the great auk would grow 30 inches long, which isn't too scary, but hear me out. It had tiny wings that would only be used to swim. They were only 13 centimeters long. Kind of cute, but again, hear me out. They were small and jarring to look at. I mean, if this thing was coming at me today, I'd certainly have a rough time. But thankfully for hungry sailors, the great auk was greatly defenseless. Yeah, oops, sorry, we got a little, little snacky. Around the 1500s, European fishermen discovered this perfect area for hunting, and it just happened to be where most, if not all, these great ox were living and thriving. Yeah, Newfoundland looked like the iceberg and club penguin. It was just like, mm, stacked, just looking real good. Now the iceberg and club penguin is gone, as are these guys, so, you know, not a bad bit. Also, I'm broken inside, I miss Club Penguin, RIP. By 1950, the last two known specimens were hunted by a single fisherman, hunted on LD Island, just off the coast of Iceland. Scientists plan on using genetic information extracted from their fossils or preserved organs. Remember those jars of organs, those guys with the random jars of exotic bird pieces? They come in handy, apparently. They plan on editing their DNA into the closest living species, which is now the razor-built ox. So yeah, the organization Revive and Restore is behind the wheel on this one. Number six. Horseshoe crab. Horseshoe crabs are marine water arthropods of the family Lemulidae. Despite their name, they are not actually anything like crabs or crustaceans. Then what are they, dude? They are technically chalicerates, most closely related to arachnids like spiders and scorpions. Awesome. Like, what are we looking at here? What, what is this thing? Fossil records for horseshoe crabs extend back as far as 480 million years ago. Nice, thank God. Wait a second, nope, they're still around. <laughs> These shelly dudes like to keep it shallow, however, in murky waters, mostly in Southeast Asia. Horseshoe crabs use hemocyanin to carry oxygen through their blood, which actually turns their blood blue due to the copper in said proteins. This feature is similar to what white blood cells do for us, and because of this, these guys are unfortunately blood harvested every year by us for medicine. Non-lethal, which involves collecting and bleeding the creature and then releasing them back into the sea. Yeah, I'd be way too scared to grab this thing. Are you kidding me? Like, I respect the animal kingdom, but like at a distance. Number five, Linenicus. It's not a Decepticon, it's a Linenicus. Close though. If you thought a T-Rex had tiny arms, wait till you see this little dude. Linenicus monodactylus, these guys roamed the lands of Mongolia 65 million years ago. I'm a fan of this dinosaur. Honestly, it's scary, and I get that, but I would honestly own this one as a pet. It was actually just giving the other dinosaurs the middle finger its entire life, basically, if you look at them. It had a little arm and one finger with one claw. That's what kind of situation. It was like Wolverine. It was like the, the, the chick from Wolverine, the one scratchy thing instead of the three. She had the one. Or Deadpool from the X-Men that no one liked. Also, one blade. That one didn't work. In terms of these other monsters on this list, it's quite small. So, you know, maybe just one little kick to the neck. Maybe you'll survive. Coming in at the size of a parrot, this little guy laid eggs and carved through everything and anything that snuck into their nest. Yeah, it was a carnivore. So, T-Rex, Velociraptor, this little guy, all coming after you. If you don't hit that thumbs up, he's gonna get his middle finger and poke you. Number four, 
the Glyptodon, basically an ancient armadillo. Yeah. Now we're talking. With its rounded bony shell house and squat limbs, it resembles a giant dinosaur turtle, aging it between 5.3 million to 12,000 years ago. This thing was old, old. Glyptodon meaning grooved tooth because of its square teeth. This thing was big, 10 feet long, weighing as much as like 4,000 pounds. Like picture a Volkswagen Beetle. This giant armadillo existed in present day North and South America. Though the Glyptodon had a powerful tail and an armored back made of a thousand bony plates, it likely lived a fairly peaceful existence. Vegetarian, nice smile, this thing was killing it. It mostly ate grass and never really had to even worry about getting into fights. That being said, the Glyptodon could easily defend itself. I mean, Captain America's shield for a back and a sledgehammer for a tail. It could literally Hulk smash said car. Early hunters likely stalked the Glyptodon for meat and its shell. To kill it, they had to turn it on its back, basically tipping over a car. Yeah, gotta give it up to the early humans. They were badass and strong. Number three, Spinosaurus. Another Jurassic Park star, and rightfully so. The largest carnivorous dinosaur of all time, even bigger than a T-Rex. Can you imagine that? I feel sick to my stomach already. 93 million years ago, they stopped terrorizing the lands of what is now Egypt and Morocco. Now, if you didn't already guess, its name translates to spine lizard. And that spine was quite long. Coming from me, like, that says a lot. The Spinosaurus would measure up to 60 feet long, and aside for its back, one of the most notable features is its six foot long head. Yeah, not neck, six foot long head. That's an Egyptian god, that's like, this is terrifying. Its mouth was similar to a crocodile's with straight, sharp teeth. He would just do the alligator smack and then just chomp the shit out of you and yours. Paleontologists from the University of Pennsylvania believe that this guy used to swim as well. Because where the first Spinosaurus fossil was found, that used to be the Beharia Oasis in Egypt, a massive swamp. Water or land, I want nothing to do with it. Long mouth, stretch neck McGee, stinky ancient alligator breath, get out of here. Never. Turtles, not even. Number two, Megalania. Megalania. The Varanus priscus. This extinct species of giant monitor lizard is a part of the megafauna that inhabited Australia during the Pleistocene. It is the largest terrestrial lizard known to have existed, reaching an estimated length of seven meters. Yeah, length of a killer whale. Weighing around 5,000 pounds. Megalania is thought to have had very early and similar ecology to the modern Komodo dragon. The fossils of lizards in Australia date back around 50,000 years ago. The First Nations peoples of Australia encountered these ancient dragons, and we actually hunted these things way, way back. These things can sprint three meters a second, Taylor. God, he's so fast. Whenever I'm tired at the gym, I'm just gonna picture this giant lizard just like trucking behind me. From its size alone, scientists suggest it would have fed mostly upon large sized marsupials and mammals such as the Australian lion. Oh, that's good. Yeah, this thing ate lions, dude. With its heavily built limbs and body, a large skull, a jaw full of serrated blade-like teeth. Some scientists regard Megalania as the apex predator for the last thousands of years. Um, yeah, I'd like to think so. It's Australia too, dude. That makes it like 18 times worse. Oh yeah, and it was venomous. Of course, of course. And finally, number one, Titan Boa. The worst for last. Here we go, my sweet bees. The Titan Boa was over 40 feet long. That's two thirds of a bowling lane. In case you wanna imagine it in your head. There you go, every time you let that ball go, just think, snake, 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 stole snake. That's how long it was. It's quite horrifying. And if we were born 58 million years ago, we'd have to avoid being eaten by this thing. Again, we grew up watching Anaconda, okay? We know how scary these things can be, especially when Angelina Jolie's dad's running the ship. He doesn't know the maps well, he's gonna take it into a swampy area. Snake's gonna come out, ruin the day. Paleontologists found this beast recently. Its fossil was excavated back in 2004, believe it or not, in Colombia near Lake Maracaibo. But it wasn't until 2009 where it was publicly described. Yeah, it took them five years to be like, should we tell them? I don't know, why should we? I mean, do we have to? So far, we only have the remains of 30 adult Titan Boas. That's 29 too many, if you ask me. I say we, like ourselves, have one. No, we don't have it. I I imagine that, I'd be sick. Even people who have snakes as pets, I'm never gonna visit. Sorry, you're alone for the holidays this time. Just you and your snake with a human name for some reason. Enjoy it. He doesn't bite. I'm like, cool, I still don't like him. Number 10, the walking worm. Okay, this was my nickname back in high school. Nice, good to be back, this one sounds nice. Earthworm Jim, Gumby, I got them all. Just a walking, lanky worm dude. 
Meet the Hallucigenia fortis, named by Simon Conway Morris back in 1979. Conway Morris named it Hallucigenia fortis because of its bizarre and dreamlike quality. Sure, art subjective, I guess, to each their own. There were over 109 specimens of these strange aquatic creatures, and they ranged in size from half a centimeter to three centimeters long. Now, number 10 on our list, okay, gotta start small, not too large, and since it was an invertebrate, it lacked a spine. Just like me, no spine, you know, just all worm. Just all air, like an inflatable person. Defining features of the walking worm, as its name suggests, were these tentacles that protruded out from the body. It had spikes that it maybe and possibly probably walked on. How terrifying is that? And in 2015, scientists realized where its head was. Yeah, its real head. We thought a fossilized stain was its head for like 35 years. And then in 2015, we found its real head. And it looks like it's grinning almost with two eyes. Dare I say worse than the stain. Let's stop looking. Number nine, the big fin squid. From the Magnapinidae family, the big fin squid, or as I like to call it, this ocean alien with shoulders and elbows, belongs to a group of rarely seen cephalopods with a distinctive morphology meaning that they're really weird looking and really rare. The first record of us catching and looking at this thing comes from 1907 in the Azores. But due to the damaged nature of the find, little information could be actually extracted. It just looked like a piece of wet crinoline pulled out of a lake. During the 80s, five specimens were found in the Atlantic and Pacific. So eventually the creature found a place amongst the books as its own species entering the Magnapinidae, or squids. So it's not actually a squid but like a third cousin. This thing looks like it crashed here on an asteroid, doesn't it? The arms are huge and held perpendicular to the body, creating the illusion of arms and elbows, giving it its trademark alien figure. Some of these things are longer than 10 meters too. That's like a school bus. These things are definitely living under the ice on Jupiter. I'm just gonna say it. I said it. Number eight, giant dragonfly. Dragonflies are awesome. I have a dragonfly tattoo. I had to check which arm, that's awesome. Welcome to being 28, I guess. Uh, but these sticky lads are old school, okay? Dragonflies are sweet. They were the first winged insects to ever evolve 300 million years ago. Modern dragonflies have wingspans of only two to five inches, but ancient giant dragonflies, again, as their name suggests, well, their wingspan was two to three feet. They're a lot bigger and scarier and stickier. I hope they never come back to this size. Again, like I mentioned in part one, it's that high, <gasps> it's that high oxygen level that does the body good. Yeah, the Paleozoic era had these beasts hovering around because, you know, the air was too good back then. Nearly all of their head is its eye, so you're f***ed in every angle, basically. The movie Dune, if you've seen this recently, great film. The ornithopters, they're engineered to fly like a dragonfly. This is based on real life science. Engineers in real life are studying dragonflies, their flight patterns right now with their wings. Just keep, keep them small and we're good. Study away, keep them small, please. Number seven, the frilled shark. Chlamydos lacus and genius, AKA the frilled shark, is the extinct species of shark that once swam our oceans. <laughs> Thank gosh. Well, actually kind of still does. Oh. The frilled shark is considered a living fossil, not just its age and time spent surfing the coast due to its primitive eel-like brown body. Its snake-like jaws, eight foot body, and the way it moves under the water are all common in ancient serpents and water creatures. Yeah, this thing's a water dragon, basically. This thing's like an eel-serpent-shark hybrid. It swims the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans, usually in deep, murky water. So am I just gonna like snorkel into one of these things any day now? Good thing is that these things are really hard to find. Like, really hard. Usually caught by accident in commercial fishing nets, usually at depths anywhere between 50 and 1,000 meters. So unless you're free diving at night and have a supersonic lung span, you should be okay. Number six, the gastric brooding frog. I'm a big fan of frogs, except for when they, you know, hatch out of their back. I don't like that. It's arguably the worst thing I've ever seen online, and I have read it, and had read it for years. These frogs would swallow its egg back in the day, and then they would hatch them out of their mouth. If you watched it backwards, you'd be like, no, stop. They all went extinct back in 1983, but scientists have somehow figured out how to implant dead cells into a fresh egg from an entirely different frog species. So we may just see this fancy frog make a fancy comeback. Yeah, let's just hope these ones aren't born out of their backs. Do you wanna see it? I feel like you wanna see it. There it is, enjoy, you asked for it. Thumbs up for this. You know, it's life, it's life, it's nature. Number five, the giant sloth. Megatherium is an extinct species of ground sloth. Locals to South America, they live between the Pliocene through the Pleistocene eras. Basically like a really long time. Yeah, this thing was big and heavy as a modern day elephant, but like sloth form. This massive beast was first discovered in 1788 on the banks of Argentina. The bones, of course, not one, 
Megatherium became extinct around 12,000 years ago, thank gosh, during the Quaternary extinction event, which also claimed most other large mammals in the New World. The extinction coincides with early America's settlement and the kill sites where sloths were slothered. I tried. Suggesting that humans were out fist fighting these things, aiding in such extinction. Yeah, all of a sudden mammoths are like way less scary. I wonder if they moved as slow too, like a bear the size of an elephant moving in slow motion. So I just like throw it. It's like right. It's like right here. Just be like. Yeah. Number four, Tasmanian tiger. Once native to Australia, of course the land of horrors, the Tasmanian tiger, also known as the thylakine, was a massive carnivorous marsupial that went extinct around the 1930s. Thank the Lord. Major factors here are, as you guessed, climate change, hunting, and its genetic diversity wasn't all too great. Now it's sad on one hand because these beautiful creatures, also kind of terrifying, they disappeared so recently, but it's recent enough that we have a shot at bringing them back. Yeah, I'm just scaring you with this one. I'm like, ah, it's terrifying, right? They're coming back, 2024 in IMAX. Yeah, imagine looking outside and seeing this thing on your own front yard. Are we ready for this? I'm not. I've seen a moose once. Very scary, very scary. I was going 40 miles an hour. I was like, that's it. Specimens still remain preserved in jars. Yeah, thank God for those jars. I was wondering what that was in the fridge. A Tasmanian tibia, nice, yum. In the science world, we already have some of the Tasmanian tiger genes present after scientists inserted them into a mouse fetus. Again, bold, but sure, they did it. One guy thought of that, how gross is that? The Australian Museum has been working hard to bring this beast back to life, only they're still lacking the DNA to fully recreate it. So, if you have any jars of Tasmanian tiger parts, lend a helping hand for science, please. Number three. Dunkleostis, from Dunkel's Bones, named after paleontologist David Dunkel, who discovered and studied the fossils. Ostis is Greek for bone, referring to the giant tectonic plates looking things that this thing is made up of. Being one of the largest and most powerful fish ever to swim in our waters, ever, these swimming tanks could eat pretty well anything it wanted including other Dunkleostises. This thing was top dog. The first remains were discovered along Lake Erie Cliffs. That's scary, that's like right over there. Dunkleosis could suck in and bite straight through any animal alive at the time, from the thick-shelled ammonites to the other placoderms with body armor. This thing was basically like the great-great-grandfather of any fish who eats other fish. They would even bite each other and dent their own armor. Their diet shifted from soft-bodied prey such as whales and sharks to larger armored prey such as placoderms. Basically it liked to eat the little crunchy stuff instead of the soft-bodied megalodons. What a sentence. Number two, the moa. This New Zealand bird went extinct about 600 years ago. See, moa, they were these flightless birds, massive, might I add, and archeologists first discovered its fossil in a cave, just hidden in the very back, right in the depths. Its flesh and everything was still attached. See, these ancient birds would reach about five feet tall, and when you think of dinosaurs, you probably think that's quite petite in comparison, but no, listen up. The birds stopped flying right after the dinosaurs went extinct. According to biologist Matthew Phillips from the Australian National University of Canberra, once the dinosaurs off, they now had freedom. They could go outside without having to make any daring escapes, right? They weren't terrified every day to be lunch. They walked around, they got fat, and they hung out in caves. So it might seem a little depressing to watch a creature lose the ability to fly, but it's because they're eating good, you know? They're good problems, right? Scientists have recently discovered MOA DNA from ancient eggshells, so there's a possibility we might see these fatties hit the skies once again. Let's keep them on Weight Watchers this time around, you know? Let's keep them, let's keep them in the sky, keep them. Number one, you're up Terrid. Long story short, an ancient huge sea scorpion. That's it, I'm done, I'm done. No, no, I said no spiders, earwigs, and scorpions. No, nope, that's it. An extinct group of arthropods that form 470 million years ago with 250 species of its own, the Euripidid, uh, is the most diverse Paleozoic class of its time. This is like the first of the first of the creepy crawly stinger pincher things, you know? They declined in numbers and diversity until becoming extinct during the Triassic extinction event about 250 million years ago. Yeah, thank God. I can't even put a crayfish on a hook without squirming. Called sea scorpions, of course, because of two qualities. Being able to go in and out of water and having two sets of lungs. Yeah, this thing's a fossil, right? This thing just got way more terrifying. They are the largest known arthropods ever to have lived on Earth, ranging anywhere between a foot and four feet big. That's a longboard, Taylor. A skateboard with claws and pinchers and a tail, in and out of the water. All right, the animal kingdom, how beautiful. 
Starting off this list in our number 10 spot, we have the Godzilla shark. With a name like that, this creature is surely anything but disappointing. About 300 million years ago, these guys ruled the sea and were one of the most terrifying sea creatures ever on our planet. Fossils of these guys have been found in the Manzano Mountains, which lie east of Albuquerque, New Mexico, and they were found in 2013 by paleontologist John Paul Hodnett. So think of a massive shark, but now picture it covered in scales, like a reptile. Okay, now add 12 rows of super sharp teeth and also the largest dorsal fin spines of any shark that has ever lived. Okay, now you've pretty much got the Godzilla shark. It was nicknamed the Godzilla shark because of its size as the skeleton is the largest fossil of its kind ever discovered in the area as well as the fact that its fin spines are so intriguing to look at. While it was called the Godzilla shark upon its discovery, it has since received a more official name of Hoffman's dragon shark, both to honor the family that owned the land where the skeleton was found and as an homage to its monstrous and reptilian appearance. In our number 9 spot today we have the Shastasaurus. This extinct genus of Ichthyosaurus is one of the largest marine reptiles known, growing to be 21 meters long. One of the most interesting things about these guys is that they were quite specialized because they had quite a wild food preference. These guys had a thirst for squid. A study of their fossils revealed that they had short snouted skulls, which has led experts to believe that their jaws had the ability to open extremely quickly and very wide. This happened so fast it created a sort of vacuum inside of their mouth, sucking in anything that was in front of it. These guys didn't bother with teeth or strong jaws, they didn't need a crazy bite force or really to even move that quickly. They basically just needed to swim over to wherever their desired squid was hanging out and uh, open their mouth. In our number eight spot today, we have the Dunkleosteus. Dunkle Dunkleosteus. I don't know, man. This creature was a genus of Plasoderm, which is a class of fish that has been extinct for around 360 million years. These ancient swimmers had osteoderms, which means that they had these plates of exposed bone that served as protection. It's like a built in armor. These guys were some of the largest and most powerful Plasoderms ever, and it had a terrifying ability that made it quite a worthy predator. It was their insanely powerful bite force, which has been estimated to be about 7. 750 kilograms. That's wild. This has led experts to believe that these guys may have been a hyper carnivore, which means that they were feeding on some pretty tough prey. Other creatures that have outer protection like they do. Ammonites, they were able to chew through some pretty tough exteriors. In our number seven spot today, we have the Mausaurus. These guys are a creature that was once very real, but they are thankfully a relic of our past because they are absolutely horrifying. They are named after the Maori god Maui, who is said to have pulled the islands of New Zealand up from the sea floor, so anything named after him is of course going to be an absolutely ginormous beast. The neck of this creature measured around 49 feet long, which is the longest proportionate neck of any animal. The entire creature measured around 66 feet long, so it's clear that their neck counted for a very large portion of their body. But like, imagine a swimming dinosaur creature with a huge snake for a neck. That's kind of what these guys were like. These guys lived on Earth during the Cretaceous period, which is good news for us, but not so much for the creatures that lived at that time. Creatures would jump into the water to avoid a T-Rex only to find this guy waiting for them. Yeah. No thank you. In our number 6 spot today we have the Helicorprion. This animal existed somewhere around 250 million years ago, and while it looks more like a shark than anything else, scientists now know it was actually a creature that is related more closely to chimeras, which are a fish that separated from the shark family about 400 million years ago. So why is this animal just scary and terrible to look at? Well, that is due to the incredibly unsettling spiral saw formation of teeth that this creature had right on their lower jaw. Yeah, an orthodontist's dream, truly. It's also not like this creature was just born with the teeth that they had for the rest of their lives. No, of course not. They had teeth that could grow and new teeth could even form. Imagine being in the ocean and you see a huge creature swim up to you that has four spiral saws for teeth. No. In our number 5 spot today we have the Megalodon. Is any terrifying prehistoric sea creatures list truly complete without an appearance from the Meg? Megalodons are one of the largest sharks to have ever existed. They were huge. 
were terrifying, they were apex predators, and they are the creatures that inspired the tales of Jaws, or the Meg. The teeth on these sharks are so large that they are three times larger than the teeth of a modern great white shark. With a teeth that size, you can only imagine how large this shark would have been. It's pretty tough to figure out exactly why the Megalodon died out. I mean, they were one of the largest, scariest creatures who shouldn't have had any trouble finding food. But that might not be the case. Some believe it was the cooling water, others believe it was the competition for food, whatever the case in the end, while the Megalodon is an incredible creature in history, I think we can probably all breathe a sigh of relief that they aren't currently swimming around our oceans. Or are they? In our number 4 spot today we have Cretoxyrhina. Measuring about 7 meters long, these creatures aren't necessarily the largest on this list full of prehistoric giants, but that does not mean it is any less terrifying. Fossil evidence has shown us that these creatures were ready to attack just about anything and everything that ended up in front of them. It could be a 4 meter long fish, a marine reptile like a mosasaur, or even a large turtle, it doesn't matter. The key to what made these guys so incredibly ferocious is their special teeth. Their teeth adapted to have a much thicker enamel, which meant that they were exceptionally resilient. This is perfect when you're trying to cut through shells and bones. These teeth are actually what landed these guys with the nickname of the Jinsu shark, which is named after the famous commercial for Jinsu knives, which are shown slicing through metal cans. In our number 3 spot today we have the Jacalopterus. Okay, I've got three words for you. Giant Sea Scorpion. Yeah, I'm not going in the prehistoric ocean. This 8 foot long arthropod lived in the water with its gross, too large pincers and claws and honestly it looks like something out of the movie Alien. These guys had segmented bodies and they are actually the largest known arthropod to have ever existed here on earth. They had multiple specialized limbs and some of them even had spikes. Like for example, their 18 inch spiked claw that was used to snatch fish as it passed by. It is said that some of these guys would crawl out of the water in order to mate and sometimes shed their outer skin and all I have to say about that is imagine finding an 8 foot long molt of one of these creatures on the beach right before going in for a swim. You wouldn't, right? I'd swear off all water after that. I'm not even drinking it anymore. I don't want any part of what these guys got going on. In our number 2 spot today we have the Tylosaurus. These creatures belong to the family of Mosasaurs and they have long eel like bodies that allowed them to smoothly cruise through the waters. They had the ability to have intense bursts of speed that propelled them to their prey which they could quickly take down. The snout of these creatures is thought to have been quite large and rather robust compared to other species of Mosasaurs which has led researchers to believe that they may have used it to their advantage. To do this, they might have rammed into larger prey so that they were stunned. This gave them time to turn around and finish the prey with their large jaws. Despite these specialized skills, it seems as though these guys weren't very picky with what they ate as they have been found with all kinds of remains in their stomach area. These creatures were very large but they were also way faster and more agile compared to their family members. What more could you want in a pre historic predator. In our number 1 spot today we have the Leeds fish. This is a fish that lived in the oceans of our world from the middle to the late Jurassic. They are the largest ray finned fish and among the largest fish that are known to have ever existed. The discovery of these fish has been a bit troublesome because of the fact that their skeletons aren't completely made of bone. There were large parts of them made of cartilage which did not fossilize. Because of this it is difficult to estimate their true size with estimates in the past ranging as large is 30 meters or 98 feet. More recent research however has lowered this number to the still exceptionally large measurement of 16 meters or 52 feet. Despite their large size however these fish weren't terrifying apex predators and instead were a part of a lineage of large filter feeders. These fish had gill arches that were lined with gill rakers which had quite a unique system of bone plates that allowed them to filter the plankton from the sea water which was their main source of food. Starting us off at our number 10 spot we have hydras. No, not the evil villains from the marvel universe, I'm talking about these small water based creatures found in the fresh waters of Europe, Asia and the Americas. 
There are between 20 to 30 different species of Hydra, and they are one of the 900 species belonging to the phylum Cyndaria, which are radially symmetrical invertebrates with tentacles. But the really cool part about these underwater creatures is that they are basically immortal. Studies show that these creatures do not show any signs of deterioration with age. They are able to continuously divide and regenerate new body cells and can basically keep themselves young forever. Remember that song Forever Young by Alphaville? It actually might be just about hydras, I think. Number nine, clams. Unless their lives are cut short by the yearly clam bake with your aunts and uncles, clams can actually live an absurdly long time for being that small. Some have even been found to be over a century old. Now to be fair, humans are starting to stretch that boundary too. We're trying our best. But considering how often clams are our food source, it's surprising. Like trees, clamshells also have rings on them, if you look carefully, that track how long they've been alive, which is how scientists can tell how long they've lived. Therefore, the bigger they are, the longer they have lived. They can weigh up to several hundred pounds and be as large as a yard across. The oldest clam ever found was named Ming Ming, and though she was only the size of an average human palm, she was about 570 years old, which is like, what? Does size matter? At our number eight spot, we have the rough eye rockfish. Pretty crazy name, right? Well, they get the name because of the spines that go along the bottom of their eyes. Kind of a rude name when you think about it. But these bright and intensely colored fish can be found in the Pacific Ocean, ranging from the northern part of Japan and Bering Sea, all the way to the North American coast down to California. Odds are, you won't get a chance to see any of these creatures unless you do a deep, deep dive because they live and spend most of their time at around 170 to 660 meters below the ocean surface. That's 560 to 2200 feet deep. These fish have been known to live over the age of 205 years old and mature much later on in their life. So that means they get to live most of their life looking young, fresh, happy, full of life with all their hopes and dreams ahead of them. <laughs> uh, must be nice. I mean, honestly, I can kind of do that too. If I ever do a video with my beard shaved off, you will see a Dewey that looks like he is 12. <laughs> Number seven, the Aldebar giant tortoise. The oldest Aldebar giant tortoise known to man passed away in 2007, and she was 255 years old, superseding her first owner, Robert Clive, who died at the age of 49 in 1774. Robert Clive was the first British governor in the Bengal presidency and was given Adweda as a pet. It is not uncommon for Aldebar tortoises to live through centuries, and some even suggest that there have been ones twice as old as Azueta who have existed. They only reach maturity at 30 years old, so they age as slowly as they move, it seems. They also can go long periods without food and aren't picky eaters. They can eat almost anything from vegetation to dead carcasses to even feces. Ugh. With their ability to thrive on both land and water, on top of having a very hard shell to protect them from predators, this species is the poster child for the phrase, slow and steady wins the race. At our number six spot, we have the tree weta, also known as zombie bugs, or also, also known as Dewey's worst nightmare. These bugs are ridiculously resilient to freezing and have special proteins within their bodies that prevent freezing from ever actually occurring. Although their hearts and brains are not as resilient to freezing, they can die when being completely frozen. But guess what? When they thaw out, they can come completely back to life like the disgusting zombie-like creatures they are and scare Dewey back into his protective bunker away from every single scary bug on the planet. I've mentioned it before, Dewey doesn't do bugs. But you know what Dewey really doesn't do? Zombie bugs! Number five, glass sponges, not glass slippers. Don't let the name fool you, these sponges are anything but fragile. Forget centuries, these creatures can live for thousands of years, even in the 10,000s. But for a while they were thought to have gone extinct. Joke's on us, goes to show how much we know about the ocean, which by the way isn't a lot, it's like less than 30%. In 1987, a team of Canadian scientists discovered a cluster of living glass sponge reefs over 9,000 years old. So if they can live and thrive for so long, why are they called glass? Well, they get their name from their spicules, which are tiny, sharp structures made from silica, a kind of glass. They feed off of plankton and other small sources of food and can filter enough water in 60 seconds, get ready, to fill an Olympic-sized pool. They also don't look appetizing and mostly serve as homes to other kinds of fish and crustaceans. Though starfish tend to like to feed on them now and then, it's pretty sad. Coming in at our number four spot is one of my favorite things to eat, lobster. Or as a much more fun name, the Homerus Americanus. 
Sounds like Gladiator. I am Homerus Americanus, are you not entertained? Scientists have discovered that through time, some lobsters can increase their fertility due to a certain enzyme called telomerase. This enzyme repairs the lost sections of DNA, making the aged cells revert back to being young again. Though this would seem to make these creatures immortal, the exact lifespan of these creatures is difficult to determine because of the regular molting of exoskeletons. Aside from that, they only have one major predator to fear, and that is me. If you like this video and you are new to our hive, make sure to like and subscribe. We love you for it, and uh, one day, hopefully, we'll all be able to hug you. I don't know. I hope so. Number three, bowhead whales. There must be something about the cold climate of the Arctic because it seems like some of the biggest creatures live there, including the bowhead whale, who, by the way, is not only massive, but can live for over two centuries. They are one of the most well-adapted creatures who live in the Arctic with an insulating layer of lubber over a foot and a half thick without humans being the hunters. Given that they are some of the biggest creatures, nothing can really threaten their existence. But beyond that, the reason they can live for so long is due to their unique genetic makeup that allows them to repair their own damaged DNA. They also age slower in general, similar to the tortoise we talked about, and they only reach sexual maturity around 25 to 30 years old. So even though time takes its sweet time killing them, humans don't, and they are under the endangered species list. Coming in at our number two spot is the Greenland shark. Known as the longest living vertebrate on Earth, this shark lives an average of 272 years old. They also don't reach sexual maturity until the age of 150 years old. Now, how can they live so long? Well, with their incredible resilience to cold water, darkness, and living at depths of 2200 meters, I'm guessing most of these sharks won't have much competition down there. This shark is actually from the prehistoric era, which is proven by an extra gill that it has on its body. So not only do these things live for crazy long periods of time, they were able to come out on top after the destruction of the dinosaurs. Man, these guys ain't playing. Number one, Tyratopsis dorni. Imagine being able to decide like when you feel like getting younger, you know? <laughs> Too old, I'm gonna go back a few years, wow. When will we have that technology? Sounds impossible, but this specific kind of jellyfish can actually do this. When it reaches a certain age, it can begin converting its cells backwards in time. Mm -hmm. They aren't indestructible, they can still be gobbled up, but depending on how lucky they are, they could potentially live forever. The creature was first discovered in 1883 and has captured the curiosity of scientists ever since. After all, why wouldn't it? An animal that has figured out how to turn back the clock of time? Now that sounds super useful. These creatures are able to do this through a process called transdifferentiation. The cells begin to convert from one type to another, albeit very slowly. They aren't really aware they are doing it, since jellyfish don't really have brains. They simply survive by how their nerves respond to stimuli, kind of like when a doctor hits your knee with a hammer and you just kick something, it's involuntary. They have no idea how rare and how incredible they really are. Number 10, the red-lipped batfish. A lot of words in that one, right off the hop. The red-lipped batfish. I gotta say, I'm a fan of this look. A little bit cheeky, uh, I kinda like them. The red lipstick, she looks like she's ready for a night out, if anything. But don't let those looks deceive you. Hiding in the depths of the Galapagos, these batfish, red-lipped batfish, may I remind you, they can grow up to 10 inches long. And the defining feature here, besides their big red lips, are their feet. Yeah, their feet. These batfish have pectoral fins that actually allow them to walk on the ocean floor. Because they belong in the same family as an anglerfish, the red-lipped batfish actually has an illicium on its head in order to attract prey, an illicium. It's got a cloud nose as well, almost. I'm not a fan of this deep sea fish, or any deep sea fish for that matter. So this batfish absolutely creeps me out. I'm also not a fan of clowns. This is kind of a mix in the middle. It checks off a lot of boxes. Number nine. The Feather Star. The Feather Star, honestly, this one is baffling. If you see this underwater, don't touch it. It's like a very, it's a toxic Swiffer mop that you don't wanna get tickled by. Look at him go, he's like a mop with feelings. The Feather Star was discovered during the Challenger expedition back in the early 70s. And these guys, they're fast too. I mean, they're not fast, but they can really move around. They move five centimeters per second, which is faster than you would think just looking at a photo of these. That's fast for an ice cold crinoid right there. There's three main parts to this fantastic brush. There's the stem, the calyx, and of course, the arms. The self-repairing arms, may I remind you. They trap prey, or rather, they trap any food particles that float on by with their feathers. They use their long feathery arms and their natural sticky mucus, 
disgusting, to catch food and then cycle it through their body into their, you know, organs and stuff. It's so fascinating. Feather stars reproduce every 10 to 16 months, but it's tricky. Male and female sea stars live in different habitats, so mating seasons, it has to really go swimmingly or else their population is at stake. Number eight, the cave robber spider. The worst thing ever, welcome to Bumblebee. The cave robber spider, or troglaraptor, can't tell which is worse to be honest, is a quick cave predator that has a fun little addition over your standard spider. Yeah, if you were afraid of spiders before, well, here's another thing to worry about. The cave robber has claws on the end of its legs. Yeah, you didn't think it could get any worse, did you? That's why I'm here, welcome, hit that thumbs up. I made, made the impossible possible. The cave robber likes to hang from its web from the top of these pitch black caves. And when it feels something a little too close for comfort passing down below, it goes down and then it snaps its prey with its claws. Yeah, like a praying mantis, only in dark caves and also, a spider above your head. That's so many horrible things, so many red flags in a row. If you live in Southwest Oregon, I'm so sorry. Please don't explore any caves. And also if you do, keep your head up before you spelunk. Number seven, stonefish. This next one is great at disguising itself as a rock. So when it comes to deadly ocean life, that's just what you wanna hear, I guess. Good game, guys. The stonefish is spiny, it's ugly. It looks medieval, almost. It looks like a made up medieval mythological animal. Each of its 13 spines are all filled with deadly venom. So if you're taking a late night skinny dip, keep an eye out for any, you know, blinking rocks. These fish look so angry, they look menacing. That's what scares me the most. They have John Wick eyes, you know? They're on a mission, they have something to do. Their venom is lethal, of course, to humans, so if you're watching from Australia, I implore you to wear steel toe boots next time you visit the beach. Stonefish don't use their venom to hunt, per se. They only shoot venom out of their spines if pressure is applied to them. That's why you gotta really avoid them. If you step on them, it's, it's gross. That's worse than anything, really. The odds of accidentally stepping on one of these guys significantly higher than any other fish because, again, they look like rocks. Number six. The sea spider, nice, best of both horrible worlds. Let's talk about them. The sea spider, thankfully, is not an actual spider. It just closely resembles one, kind of like a daddy long legs. It's a marine anthropod, and the reason it's so haunting to look at is because of polar gigantism. It's really big and horrible looking. Many species have this, their climate being so harsh, lack of nutrients, sunlight, friends, family, emotions. Scientists believe that that's caused sea spiders to slow down their metabolism, so much so that they require now only a small amount of oxygen to actually survive. So over time, the oxygen around these sea spiders turn them into Captain America, right? They just get souped up. They take on way more than they're adapted to and therefore, they're giant and very scary to look at. Number five, the hoff crab. Okay, we gotta, we gotta laugh it up a little for a halfway point. When these creatures get their name, once they're discovered, it's often in relation to their appearance, right? Or their superpower. The immortal jellyfish ages in reverse, right? The glass octopus is otherwise see-through. Gets their name off of, you get it. The hoff crab. Yeah, the hoff crab gets its name because it looks hairy. Yeah, David Hasselhoff just tweeted the hoff crab with this photo, so random, we love it. Now it's a scientific fact. The scientific name later given was Kiwa Tyleri, appropriately renamed after its discoverer, Paul Tyler from Southampton University, not, you know, the Hoffman. This hairy guy was found in the East Scotia Ridge in the Southern Ocean, where the water is too cold for the hoff crab. So the hoff crab is covered in bacteria because it spends its time staying warm near hydrothermal vents on the ocean floor. The guy just sits around a deep sea campfire his entire life. Sounds pretty cozy now that I'm saying that out loud. He's a deep sea hairy caveman. And when it comes time to eat, the hoff crab just scrapes off bacteria off his little hairy arm. He just gives himself a nice haircut, I guess. He just eats his own fuzz. Number four, the leafy sea dragon. If this was a list of cute sea animals, this would definitely be near the top, I'll admit. Leafy sea dragon, how adorable is that guy? These fish belong to the family that includes pipefish and seahorses, but they're the only species in their genus. The leafy sea dragon is most commonly found along the southern and western coasts of Australia, and they're very obviously named from their appearance. Glass octopus, leafy sea dragon. It would seem as though these guys would use their leafy protrusions to help propel them through the water, but that's actually not the case. Instead, they're merely used as camouflage. All beauty, no business. These sea dragons are usually quite solitary, but they have an incredible sense of direction. It was once thought that they didn't travel very far, but it was later discovered that they actually travel several hundred miles, but they also use this keen sense of direction to return to the same spots 
like the exact same spots. So it's pretty cool. They have a little built-in GPS system somehow in their leafy systems. Number three, Blue Dragon. This one sounds like it's from a different time, let alone a different universe. I don't even know. The Blue Dragon? What even is this? The Blue Dragon, AKA the Glaucus Atlanticus. First of all, it looks like it's from Pandora. It's kind of beautiful. This thing is bright blue. It's a blue sea slug, believe it or not. It's a gastropod that decided that it's too cool for its shell, so. Now it looks like a naked alien out there. Just a naked alien, brave in the wilderness. And to be fair, when you store poison in your fingertips, you don't need to hide. Just get out there, just do some jazz fingers. This sea slug can often be found in the Atlantic, Pacific, and the Indian Ocean. And they favor tropical waters, and they literally adapt to survive. They eat Portuguese man o war these deadly jellyfish. Blue dragons will actually store its prey cnidocytes. It will just take them. It'll take the toxins from them and store them in these small sacks. So you never know what kind of venom is being held at any given time. They steal your loot. How rude is that? They steal your undersea loot. Number two, brood X cicadas. Okay, hold on to your butts for this one. If you're eating Mr. Noodles, set that mug aside for just one minute here. Over the past couple of years, billions of cicadas came back from the ground all over the United States for the first time in 17 years. Yeah, you probably noticed, maybe one or two got caught in your hair, and now you're scarred. Thing is, they just happened to be born with a fungus made from the same chemical found in poisonous mushrooms. So they didn't have a great time right from the get-go. After 17 years, they came out and uh, yeah, they were a little confused. They didn't feel too hot. This fungus ate away at their bodies, so much so that their butts their butts literally like molded and fell off. It was horrible. Because white spores are actually pushing them off. These cicadas don't even know what they're doing at this point. They're calling this a zombie virus for bugs. More than fair, it's probably, it's probably a lot to handle. Their ass is falling off, so yeah. These poor things just want to mate and move on in life, but now both males and females are making cicada catcalls, so their whole system is just ruined all because of this fungus messing with their heads. These cicadas aren't a threat to humans exactly, but their tragic summer of 2021 is definitely worth mentioning. And finally, number one, snapping shrimp. These little guys, don't let them fool you, they're a menace. These guys can literally create a sonic boom as it attacks you. That's how fast it can hit. You won't see it coming and neither did this explorer. Here's a clip of a mantis shrimp in action punching through a diver's gear. They're often found in coral reefs, oyster reefs, any given reef at any given time. And these little guys, these pistol shrimp, they hit their prey at 100 kilometers per hour. And in doing so, a large air bubble is created and because this, you know, Mike Tyson shrimp is so quick with the left hook, the following pop is around 200 decibels. So the sound alone can actually stun their prey if they missed. But if they're lucky and they actually connected, you're dead instantly. You won't even feel a thing. You won't even know what happened. The sound actually resembles dry twigs burning and crackling underwater. So if you hear that, get out of the water. 